So it's collaboration time again, and as you'll know, I'm a massive robot fan, so a lot of my friends make robots. Um, I want you to go and have a look at Steve Tukowski, I want you to go and have a look at uh, DaCosta Bailey, and this guy is one of my favourites. His name is Honorio DePiro, and he is an absolute talent, and happens to be a really, really nice guy as well. I've worked with Honorio on a couple of jobs, and I've helped him with some of his robots. So this week, I'm just going to show you a few of the tools that I would use to make one of his robots, and he did a really cool illustration that I saw on Instagram, and I wanted to make it. And I wanted to make it a video so let's dive right in have a look at those few tools and then we'll do a time lapse of how I made his little industrial robot So before I dive into the time lapse and show you how I made Honorio's robot, let's just have a look at the tools that I'm going to use for new users, just in case you don't know these. So that's a default sphere on the screen there. And I don't really like that one for a number of reasons. So if you look at the wireframe, um, so that's at the bottom here, I just click that on. And then if you go up to the top here and we have a look at the types of primitives in the scene menu, um, if you bring in a UV sphere instead and then have a look at it side by side, you can see that the one on the left, the one that we start with, is actually made from a cube that's been subdivided up. What do I mean by that? So you can see that it's actually quite cubic. And you can see that originally when it started, before it was rounded, it was actually a cube. What we want is this that gives us a true sphere. It looks more like you, you would see a globe. So this first one, we can delete that. I don't often use that. Um, oops, I deleted the second one as well. So if you're using that sphere, there's a couple of things you can do. So you can increase the geometry. So if we validate it, it means we can sculpt on it. And we can just go back up here to the topology menu and subdivide it a couple of times. And that means now that we've got quite a high res mesh to, to, to play with. And a lot of the times during the video, you'll see me put orthographic on from the camera menu. And you'll see me do snap like that. And that means it's fully snapped with no perspective. Now the tools that I'm going to use the most are these. So there's going to be trim. And I'm going to use trim rectangle a lot. And you'll see that that literally trims away your model. So quite often you will want to just trim away bits like that. And you're also going to see this one, which is split. And I might want to do that. And what that does, believe it or not, that split the model. And to be able to see it, if you come up here to display settings and put on outline, the model that we're currently selecting and work, working on has got an outline around it. So if you now just move around, if you hit view and roll around, you can see the different parts. And also it's up here in the scene menu. You can see the different parts this way. And that means now that we've got separated parts. I've just turned the eye off, which means you can't see it. But there you go like that. So if I wanted to use this bit and I wanted to move it around, it's gizmo and then move it around like so. So you'll see me using trim, split and a lot of moving around like that, as well as tools like move. Um, you'll see me moving some geometry. If it moves too quickly, we knock down this intensity and it's quite subtle then. So that might be used for things like the arms. If you see down here on the arms, I, I actually make them and then move them around. I'm going to get that gold look by coming up here. And you can actually just pick one of the golds there and just go force paint all. And it'll show you the different golds. Three fingers on the screen will rotate the lights around for you. And if that gold's too much, you can just make your own. So you just change the colour, change the roughness and change the metalness and force paint it. And you'll see there, you can force paint each bit and that's gonna give you the different golds and the metals if you want to use them while you're modeling. So most of the time I'm gonna make a primitive and then adjust it. So what I'll generally do is I'll take something like the cylinder, I'll validate it and then I'll subdivide it to give me lots of geometry. And then I'll use this outer ring, outer ring, um, and bring it around like this and that would make things like the pipes on, on his back and you'll see me use that quite a lot um, and again you can just flood fill like that so that's how simply you can make something like like this it's obviously a complex looking model and it's a really cool stylized design but if you break that down into your basic primitives you're gonna get it 
really you're going to be able to understand how to make it in a, in a matter of minutes. So let's dive into a time lapse and I'll show you how I went about making it. So the first thing we need to do is get that artwork in. So I literally just screenshot from Instagram, as you can see there, and I've left it exactly as I screenshot it. Um, and don't forget, Honorio De Piro is well worth following on Instagram, so go and have a look at his, his Instagram and check out all of his other stuff. So I start off with primitives, and as you can see there, I just took a sphere, exactly as I did in the start of this tutorial, and I just, I just chopped it up using the trim tool. And then the, the dark bit that I'm doing is masking. So if you drag a mask with mask, uh, use SEL mask and then a rectangle, mask off an area and then you can move the area that isn't masked. And that's what I did to shape the, the first two parts. Then I used trim and split and then you can see the top and the bottom is the same, um, basically the same model. Now to, to make a, a, a gap for the head, you take a sphere and you then basically voxel remove that sphere from the other one. So that means selecting both of them, turn the eye off on the sphere that's for the head, and that chops out um, a hole. Now, voxel, voxel remeshing and any of that kind of process is a little bit high. You know, it's, it's something you really need to get into very, very quickly. So if that's something you need more of, check out all of my other YouTube channels, and it'll give you some more in-depth um, look at, at how to, to, to get confident with that. So wherever there's something like the head or the eye, I always I always chop out a hole first, and that gives me something to put the either the head in, into the body, or then eyes into the head. And it really gives you some nice shadows, and it gives you what we would call visual interest, and it catches the, the light quite well. So whenever possible, I always try, rather than just sticking the head onto the body, it's good to have that little hole uh, that just gives you that, that, that little area for the, the, the what we call ambient occlusion or the, the occluded areas. It's, it's nice deep shadows. So to do the arms, just primitives. So started off with the sphere. I put the sphere for the elbow um, and then made a cylinder for the uh, the upper arm, the, 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 the humerus as we call it. Uh, where your bicep is and it's just very very simple tubes if you look at honorio's work you can pick out the primitives really really simply um obviously the forearm the bit that i'm going to do in a, in a second is you know that's a little bit more complex so it's a, it's a case of thinking what is your best way of making something like that so with the hand there i thought let's just make a sphere and chop it off at the back and that gives me the the, the look of almost like a paw really and um, the dark glow around or the dark area the shadow around the hand as you can see that is ambient occlusion switched on so i use a lot of um or there's a lot of post processing in nomad that you can do so there you see me putting the forearm on and i'm basically just using the move tool and i'm literally dragging it around and making sure that it's it's the right sort of shape to to, to suit what we're trying to to achieve pull it over the hand where possible and then that basically makes all of those fingers uh so the arms, I duplicated them. I used mirror at the top. It's very simple. Just uh, merged them together and then mirrored them. And then started on the leg. So we then started with a cylinder again. It's very, very repetitive. Very, very quick and simple ways of making these. So the foot is going to be a sphere. Same process using the trim. So just, just that, that's the knee. And then the, the foot will be exactly the same. And you just make sure that one primitive is embedded into the other primitive in, in a way that you, you would want to see. So the foot, as I just said, you know, a sphere, trim it off at the bottom, trim it off at the back and just make sure it's it's the right sort of shape for what you what you want to, to achieve. And if you look at Honorios, they're quite sharp. There's quite a sharp wedge off the front. So I just snipped off using the trim tool, just snip off the front and it just makes a nice little wedge like that. So I went back and adjusted the knee a little bit there because I wasn't confident with it. So rather than, you know, mushing the knee around, I, I changed the, the, the thigh a little bit. And, that, uh, and that, that basically corrected what we needed. So there you go. That, that, that's how long it takes to get those basic shapes. And the whole video, the whole process is one hour and 15 and i'm compressing it down to about 10 minutes here but you can see it doesn't take long uh, it, it really is just a case of following those basic steps 
Um, I looked at the illustration and where he where he's got the the stacks of smoke, and they've got the nice graphic, almost um, Quentin Blake looking graphical style on the back there. So I just decided to do. I snipped off the bottom of one of the pipes, and I basically then just used um, a repeat of that then merged them together and made several different sizes and then again repeat 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 it's a very 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 common way of doing that kind of really really nice visual style by just repeating something you've made once and rotating it and scaling it um, and i think i got close to the to to the reference without spending hours and hours trying trying to work out how to do it um, the good thing to do really is you should obviously be, you know, you're trying to work on the, the, the reference, but a good idea is to be ready to change that because not always do you get a good translation from 2D to 3D. So if it's not reading really well on screen and you can't get it to work, then, you know, if you're doing it as a commercial job, then you have to be careful because uh, a concept artist or a, an art director might have chosen that look for a reason. Um, if you're doing it for yourself or with a, you know, with, with someone like I'm doing here, it's, you know, we, you can soon quickly just ask the question of, of how that should be. So what I did for, for the um, uh, bolts around the body is I just use an alpha and that's basically just a, a little black and white map. And then I just dragged that onto the surface and that gave me those studs. And then I put a floor in, which is a cylinder. And as you can see, I've got good shadows already there. And that's because I added a light and that just helps me pin it to the ground with the ambient occlusion and the cast shadow. You can you can really make your model look like it exists in the real world because it's casting shadows. It's you know it's it's definitely meeting the ground and that's where the ambient occlusion comes in. And there you go. I'm trying different different materials again, different lighting, and I'm feeling like I've got the character captured already. So now it's just a case of of trying the different ways of of lighting it to bring it to life. And I tried lots of different graphical styles at the end of this, although Honorio had given me a really, you know, really defined style, that nice sketchy ink style. I just wanted to try quite a few different things with the model once it was made. So I put it in lots of different scenes and lit it in lots of different ways. You can see there when I was, I, I basically just took a, a, a photograph then. I, I, I just literally did an internal screenshot and that gives me something to, to send away to paint over. Um, the smoke, I decided to just bring a load of spheres in. I voxel merged them together, and that means you're welding them all into one model, and then smoothed them down a little bit and repeated them where needed. It doesn't, doesn't take long if you're using repeats. Um, and tried to get the look of the, you know, the curling, billowing smoke. So I smoothed it all down, and then the, there's... Um, a great way in Nomad to reduce the opacity so the material um, opacity goes right down that makes it transparent and you'll see in a moment that when when we do make it transparent it, it really kind of a, 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 it gives the look of, of the of the smoke that we would want certainly stylized but but definitely like um, a, a smoky effect and you can see it there it's a little bit like bubbles there at the moment but it gets better as we work on it and reduce the, uh, you know, reduce the specularity. So that shininess shouldn't really be in there. You can see he's looking very much like the concept now. So it's a, again just a case of try the lighting, try lots of different, um, you know, different lighting positions. Try and rotate the HDRI, rotate the lights, until you've got a really nice looking, um, stylish, you know, piece. And and be prepared to be taking um, screenshots all the way along. Uh, and then we're coming to close to the end of it then. So, uh, you know, from, from, from now on, I'm just trying to improve the scene. So I'm, I'm there just adding a little bit of painting to the smoke, um, reducing, you know, changing the colour of the background, changing the colour of the material a little bit, and then just enhancing the, the, the look of the metal on his body a little bit. I, I tried bloom there, but it didn't work. Um, and I tried to put curvature on, which I really like, which gives you a nice line. Um, you can see the, the depth of field and a few other effects coming into play there. And that's it, really. That's pretty much how we, 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 we would do something like this. Um, so go and have a go yourself and post any of your explorations um, in the comments down below. I hope you're enjoying these videos and if you are please give one a thumbs up it does help me get my videos in front of other artists who like doing what we do if you are enjoying it then subscribing to the channel will mean that i can let you know when i'm uploading new content which is quite often on a wednesday and a friday have a great week everyone